Well, I hope that uh, the review helped out my boomer friends. Uh, okay, boomers? Ah, uh, yeah, four previous trips to Nepal. Whew, yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, now I walk along Anjuna Bay. Stroll to Omela's uh, Beach Cafe, take a swim. And uh, get up to Joe Bananas at noon because that's exactly when Eddie shows up every day. Mm -hmm. And Tony, yeah, here come the four chapatis, fruit salad, chai, and Tali plate. Okay, yeah, well, after four uh, seasons in Gaul. Eddie and his troop uh, begin their migratory bird flight to the north, to the Himalayas. And uh, fifth trip to Nepal. Uh, characterized by a, a starry-eyed squeeze play. <laughs> Let me tell you about that, says Eddie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, Eddie uh, visited Valerie the previous year in Kathmandu, and when she told him uh, she might explode on the airplane getting back to France. Is that ring a bell? Uh, uh, and, uh, and her boyfriend, German Harry. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, Harry, her sleazy boyfriend, uh, he was exploiting her financially, sexually. When they meet up again in the cabin, uh, Hare explains, Valerie and I have, have gotten married. Uh, Eddie wonders, uh, why did you do that? Uh, well, uh, so we can stay together in, in case we get busted. Uh, we're doing a drug run from Nepal. Well, there are so many of them, hundreds. <laughs> um, and, and they're like, they got this great plan. They, they've got a um, Tibetan Mastiff. This is a huge dog, you know, it would just like rip your arm off for a snack. Dog. Uh, famous Tibetan Mastiffs. Yeah. Uh, they rigged up this cage with the dog and inside <laughs> The cage, the wood in the cage is pure hashish. Yeah, we're talking about 200 pounds. Okay. <laughs> and they're going to fly to Calcutta, change planes, and fly to London. And they figure with the dog, you know, nobody's going to come near the cage. You know, um, well, boom, boom. <laughs> I'm and he never gets involved in the many hashy scams flowing out of Kathmandu to Europe, America, Canada, Australia. I mean, his painful year as a prisoner and a fugitive and paranoid, unhappy man uh, in Europe and Morocco cured him for life. <laughs> Don't get anywhere near drugs. <sighs> well... Well, in Nepal, uh, again, Eddie, uh, you know, he, he, he resided in the no-frills shelter on Freak Street called the dormitory, kind of brothel, crash pad, combo. Mm -hmm. and by that mystical experience, say, finger Eddie in your smartphone, hear him talk about it. Yeah, mystical experience. Almost killed him with uh, soul-sucking <laughs> magnetic energy. And two years later, another weird experience in the dormitory again? Well, uh, I take this right from uh, Eddie, uh, directly. Uh, Eddie says, look, I remember uh, uh, I wake up to uh, find dimensions in my room completely altered. I feel strange. My, my body has no control over itself. Uh, well, having to piss, I go downstairs hurriedly to uh, 
the bathroom and uh, going back to my room, I suddenly realized my body is totally irresponsible. I mean, it's, char- it's capable of just playfully leaping off the balcony onto the paved courtyard. No survival sense left at all, zero, and uh, unmindful of what may happen to me. I must take my own body by the hand and lead myself back to my room. <sighs> Lying in bed, I hear strange voices. I see faces. Oh, what? Huh? Someone is accusing me of being the narc on the scene in Kathmandu? Then I see the face of the freak who is really the narc. <laughs> oh, no. Um, more voices. My head seems about to burst. I fall prostrate on the floor, completely surrendered. The voices and visions in my head <sighs> dissolve. Yeah, thank God. Mm-hmm. And uh, calmed. Thankful that the storm's blowing over. Yeah. And I and I realize, like, every single person may, may, may go through something like this, what I've just gone through. So how could I possibly dislike anybody? I feel that uh, this not disliking anybody pulled me through. Mm-hmm. If I'd surrendered, if I'd been full of hate and fear, I would have become insane. Well, Harry and Valerie uh, walk into the cabin. Eddie, well, that was fast, he remarks, uh, surprised. They explain uh, that they only got as far as Calcutta. And when they entered the airport, that fucking dog cage started to fall apart. Harry reports that, yeah, he tried to nail the cage back together with his fists, with his bare hands. He's panicking in the lounge of the airport. (laughs) Not the low-profile drug run they had envisioned and what to do. If they'll fly back to Catman do. With a damn dog. Mm 